I'm John Skinner, and this supports my book, Fishing for Summer Flounder, Fluke Jigging from Shore Boat and Kayak, and you can learn more about the book at flounderbook.com. My rig has a bucktail at the bottom, and one foot above that I have a Tsunami Glass Minnow, the uh, silicone skirt model. And I'll be tipping these with gulp baits as well as uh, fluke strips and sea robin strips. And I'm real happy about the bucktails. These are the John Skinner line. They're made by s and They glow. They have rattles. Um, an excellent finish. The right hair density. Very well tied. Sharp hooks. Uh, American made. Um, I'm really proud of this jig. Now a real treat this trip is look at John coming around the, the console there. Look what he's got in his hand. He's got a live snapper. Uh, we've got a live well with live snappers and live peanut bunker and they're large peanut bunker. So we have about the best bait you could possibly have. And um, yeah, they can go ahead and use that and I'm going to stick with my gulp jigs and, and see how they compare. Now live snappers like that would always be a nice thing to have along, but you know, there's an availability issue. Uh, most of the fluke season, they're not available. Uh, but this is a September trip, and there's some fluke around. But, uh, yep, we're on the grounds here, and, and I'm hooked up uh, using the bucktail and gulp. Now, another feature of this trip is you can see these waves. Uh, if you looked at the buoys for this day, even the marine forecast, believe it or not, these are five-foot waves and they're generated um, from a pair of hurricanes, Irma and Jose, and this is actually shot the day before Irma hits the Florida Keys. Now, because these waves are generated so far from here, they're long period swells. The, the period on these waves is 13 seconds. So five feet, 13 seconds, that's how they read on the buoy, that's what the forecast was. And yeah, look, uh, it's a smooth day, in fact, uh, we had to contend more with the wind than we did with the swells. Those swells were very evident though as we looked towards the shore because we could see those big waves uh, building and breaking and we could see surfers riding those waves and uh, yeah and we, we could hear them busting on the shore and as we uh, left here and rounded a nearby point yeah you know then they really became apparent but for us um, yeah you see what it is. Now however um, many times you'll hear that swells will shut down the fluke fishing and in some places this happens um, I can tell you it did not happen this particular day that's better yeah it's starting to come around nice fish wow. okay and you just got to see the second John we've fished with him before and he got a nice fluke in the back he, he does find this trip we're not going to see him too much on video because we're in a 32-foot center console. I'm all the way up in the bow. He's all the way in the stern. He's pretty far away, so I'm not uh, picking him up on the camera too much. And I'm going to say more about this boat in a couple of minutes because it is unique and uh, it is really nice. But uh, let's uh, let this fish play out. What it's worth, I wasn't getting anything, so I just put a new gulf grub on because Sweeney said he did that and it helped with the sea robin. So I put a brand new gulp on. I just went, I re, re changed my goal because. I'm gonna put a. Ooh, it's got potential. Okay. Luckily, you have the best net man in the business right next to you. Yeah. Uh, it's yeah. evidence countless yeah. times. Yeah. Sweeney, you got your hands free? Uh, What's that? No. <laughs> yeah, you got your I was. Hands free to pass me a sandwich. I don't know, I just wanted him to net the fish. Yeah, I want to net it with one hand while I'm eating the sandwich. Good one? Yes. Decent. Oh, yeah, that's a nice catch. Oh, nice catch. Six plus. Wow. Oh, he hit my bucktail. Well, with, we'll with that swing hook on there, huh? Yeah. That's a nice fish. And there's a nice still picture of the fish. And uh, that was it for John with the live snapper, because uh, you know, I'm not showing all the fish that are being caught, uh, but. Yeah, he had enough, and uh, he went over to the bucktail and gulp, and yeah, he's actually got, he's got a John Skinner bucktail on there, too, and uh, yeah, it's just about a keeper, but uh, it was better than what he was doing with the live snapper. Now, uh, look, I'm not going to sit here and tell you that bucktails and gulp are better than live snappers or live peanut bunker. Um, I'm not going to tell you they're any worse. I can just tell you, on this trip, um, you know, the other guys started off with them, and I purposely saw that as an opportunity to do a comparison. 
So I stayed with the Jig and Gulp, and um, they all went over, except I believe Sweeney in the back corner, kept one on the bottom the whole trip. He caught one fluke, uh, uneventful fluke on that keeper, and um, John did get a nice sea bass on, on a snapper. Other than that, um, the rapidly bounced uh, Jig and Gulp uh, did the job and, and, and caught very well. In all honesty, um, I thought I was going to be the one switching over because you know, it was just such high quality bait, and it's, it's bait that's hard to you know to come by. I mean, how many trips can you go out and have a live well full of snappers and, and big peanut bunker? But yeah, so that was a fun part of this trip. And amazingly, the third angler in the boat in the center there uh, is not named John. That's Rick. He's the boat owner, and what an awesome boat this is. This is a 32-foot Metal Shark Fearless. Um, and I'll put a link to it in the, the video description in case you want to look at it further. It is obviously really a unique boat. I've never been on one like it. Apparently the boat builder builds uh, military boats, Coast Guard boats, etc. And uh, they have a line of sport fishing boats, rod holders all over the place. Um, yeah, coming around the point uh, between the swells and the wind at that time, it was nasty. We just blew right through that, and yeah, this this was a great boat to be fishing on. All right, I mentioned those John Skinner bucktails. Uh, I know J and H Tackle, Oakdale, Long Island, in the store and online has them. I know there's some other shops that have them. I really, honestly, don't know what shops those are yet. Uh, the these have just hit the stores within the last couple of weeks, and uh, yeah, I, I should find that out. Anyway, I will put a link um, in the video description to these bucktail jigs. Now, normally I'd prefer to just stick with gulp grubs completely, but uh, you may have seen in previous videos, there's a lot of sea bass, porgies, other things down there tear into the gulp. So I've been using the meat strips a lot, and that's just uh, strips of fluke, strips of sea robin. The sea robin strips are really working very well. So, uh, yeah, I've got that on the bottom jig, but uh, I always have a gulp up on the top. Good? Yeah, I dropped a good one, yeah. Oh, he come back, he come back. Come on. Nah, son of a bitch. Don't go to Halkius. Leave Skinner alone. He's a busy man. He's tired. He did come to me. No, he didn't. Oh, he didn't. He, came. Oh, he was down. right there. He was just waiting. Better? Nah. Anything good? Uh, it might be like a keeper. <laughs> no, I don't. Well, all right, whatever. Thanks. So I always preach uh, pretty fast hook sets and. And if you miss them, they're going to come back. Just watch hours and hours of underwater video where you can just keep pulling a bait uh, away from them over and over, and they just keep coming back. And, yeah, that was a good example there. I had them on. I dropped them. I missed them. And, you know, it's, it's keyed in on that thing. You keep it moving. Uh, most of the time it's going to come back. And I really think a lot of times when you drop a fish or you miss something and it doesn't come back, I bet that's not even a fluke, or at least I like to tell myself that. But, uh, yeah, that was a good example of a fish uh, hanging around and striking multiple times. So the Tsunami Silicone Glass Minnow that I'm using as a teaser, yeah, this is great. You know, it's got a, a good hook in it, nice uh, barbed shank, holds the, the gulp grubbers on well, and, boy, that really did well this trip. Really saves the gulp having those bait holder barbs on there. And, uh, yeah, it's a great uh, teaser for fluke. Now, something else about the swells, uh, yeah, it often shuts down fluke fishing, and when it doesn't, often uh, it's farther from shore, deeper water, and when we've been fishing this area this summer, we've been fishing uh, five miles out, three miles out, and we hit those two spots first this day, and there was nothing out there. We did not catch a fluke, and then we ended up, uh, I don't know how far off the beach we are, or a lot closer than we fished all summer, and that's where the fish were, so you never know. Yeah, I should have kept tension on it. It's okay. The keeper. Nice job with the net. Beautiful. Came right out. I got a good one. Okay. Good one. 
and that foul hook or anything. He's, well, he's coming up easier now, but he's still going to be okay. Yeah, it's a nice one. Oh yeah, Easy does it. Good fish. Five plus. Oh yeah, he's definitely better than five. Yeah, four. Yeah, right, right. Oh, nice. Good job. Very good. Oh, I know, Sweeney's. Oh, Sweeney's on a blue too. Mark the spot. Mark the I just did. I just right. did. <laughs> and I'm on a good one too. Oh man, he's taking. Oh, I dropped him. He took. Get line down. On get me. down. Going right back down. Yeah, he was taking line. Hey, get away. <laughs> oh man, it's three. I dropped like that. Oh, <laughs> So I know why you only have one keeper, by the way. Why? What am I doing wrong? Why, why tell me? All right. If, do you, you still have that longer leader on the dropper? Yeah. That dampens the action. When you have a short, when you do that, you just between the flex and the rod, which isn't much on this, but that longer leader kills all the action. Like when I shoot underwater video, I have to go with a long leader in order to keep the bounce out of the camera. So it's the same thing with the jig. You want to shorten it up so that you get action on the jig. Yep, yep, yep. This is a good one. Oh yeah. Well, that's I think that's what I just dropped. What? Mine was not that good. No, no, no. Mine wasn't that good. But I need to. I'll take some. When we reset, I'll take some. some I got plenty of rigs. Okay, just take some inches off the rig. Oh, yeah, the yeah, that's too. Yeah, yeah. I'm gonna need a net. I know, no, I know. Maybe I'll pull the skitter and get why I have the net. <laughs> yeah. Nice fish. I don't know. Is he? Yeah, he is. He is. He is smart. Yeah. I couldn't see him. That's you know, come straight up like that. Oh. Too bad we don't have a net. <laughs> okay, so this is Rick's first time out uh, light tackle jigging. In fact, uh, part of the way into the trip, it, we were catching. He wasn't so. Um, I gave him one of my rods, so he's got the the tsunami quantum set up, and uh, so finally he's got a a decent fish on here, and uh, yeah, you know it's uh, it's a fun way to fish and. I can tell you that after this trip, he went out, you know, bought the rod, the reel, and uh, he had such a good time doing this. So that was a lot of fun to see. And near the end of the trip, he was uh, doing actually, I think, better than anybody because uh, I'm pretty sure he had like three of the last four keepers and uh, a couple of nice ones in there. So, yeah, it worked out well. Let's see. Any zip ties by any chance? I do. We could probably zip tie the bottom. Okay. Yeah. I'm coming. Oh, here he is. Whoa. That's a nice fish. Rick. Look at the size of that fish, John. That's the biggest fish that's ever you guys ever saw. There we go. Look at that. This is gonna kill me to throw this back. And I'm going to leave you with a bird that decided to rest on the boat. Okay, I hope you enjoyed this and uh, thanks for watching. Now, where did you come from? You want a rag? Uh, yeah, if you just put a towel over, it'll be easy. Mm -hmm. Yeah, here. Yeah, here's one. Yeah. Oh, 
Maybe he ran into the glass. You can hear him. Yeah, it could be. Should I? <laughs> I'll put him up on the top. There. See what he does? You know what? Yeah. Right here? I guess. I oh, there you go. Oh. Uh -huh. uh -oh. <laughs> He's up here. All right, well, he He's won't be up there long. Of you know what? Leave him. He's fine. Yep.